suddenly something comes out from the left. And I'm like, tiger, tiger, tiger. But then when she came, she came with a bang. Every day she was being sighted. And when she walked in front of the vehicles, the vehicles pushed back. She walked with an attitude. She walked with confidence. Ah, uh, solo. And as Bomera approached, she started crouching down and starts snarling at her. Like that, Bomera takes his right paw and rips open Solo's chest. At that moment, I, I thought she was going to die. That's where the story unfolds, which we don't know. This is Soyash Keshri. He's a wildlife filmmaker and presenter and has spent over a decade in the forests of Bandhavgarh. He's been tracking the tigress solo for years and has given brute access to some of the intimate moments in her life. This is a land of myths and legends. In Hindu mythology, it's believed that Ram uh, gifted it to Lakshman uh, during his Vanvyas. A land where royalty reigns supreme. Earlier, it used to be a fort, uh, or rather it used to be a hunting ground for the Maharajas. A land walked by mighty beasts. And we were driving, driving, and suddenly so the, the guide in the front is like, Sir Tiger! This is the Bandavgar National Park. Deep in the heart of the National Park, the 2,000-year-old fort was the seat of power for many dynasties. In 1968, it was declared as a tiger reserve uh, and a national park. And since then, hunting has been banned. As the region shifted hands through the centuries, yet another dynasty started claiming the land, the Royal Bengal Tigers. That is where our story begins, with the Tiger Queen, Raj Behra. Raj Behra was a very, very bold tigress. She was never scared to fight another tiger, and she was a very dedicated mother. Born in 2007, Raj Behra was the daughter of Churchara. She had inherited her mother's territory and reigned over the area around the fort in the heart of Bandhavgarh. They're full of grasslands, they're full of water bodies, there are few hills in the middle and all of them have beautiful deep caves. She gave birth to a litter of one male and three female cubs. Her daughter, Solo, was next in line. I saw Solo first time when she was about four and a half, five months old. And uh, I clearly remember it even to this day. Solo would go under the log and the other cub would climb on top of the log and they would fight and then they would switch positions. Then they would fight, then they would switch positions. And the mom looking at a distance, this proud mom like, that, those are my kids. And here she is, the crown princess. Meet Solo. Ah, Solo. Um, you know, sometimes it's very difficult. I don't know where to begin and where to end. I think I can talk about her my entire life. But among the Rajvara litter, Solo was the one that always used to be out there independently. So people are like, you know, she's the Solo female. Uh, she's always alone. So they gave her the name Solo. Solo, she had a very slender face and she had two fish-like patterns. Uh, above her eye and then one on this side as well. As soon as Solo came of age, she wanted to claim her kingdom. She had grown up here. She knew the best spots to hunt, eat, drink, hide. Why would she ever want to leave? But there was one problem. Her mother was still queen. Between mothers uh, and, and daughters or even between siblings, fights look really bad, but they aren't that bad. They're not fatal. The first to go down and submit loses. So she took over her mother's territory. A lot of people say that, you know, Solo fought with her mother so much that her mother died. That's not true. The prodigal daughter had arrived and she had big plans. And then this Solo tigress suddenly kind of disappeared. 
people weren't seeing her enough and people were a little concerned what is going on that's where the story unfolds which we don't know but then when she came she came with a bang every day she was being sighted and when she walked in front of the vehicle the vehicles pushed back she walked with an attitude she walked with confidence so she made it with three males um and then she gave birth but those that litter did not survive her first litter did not survive at all and they were killed by an intruding male male tigers will kill the cubs they have in father to push their own gene forward and soon enough there was another king in solo's life uh, mangu's a huge tiger enormous tiger and i've seen him only a couple times and he he's he is massive solo's second litter of cubs uh, was born in late 2018 she wasn't getting them uh, out at all this is perhaps because Solo had already lost her first litter of cubs and she was being extra careful in making sure that once they come out they're big enough they're strong enough Call it mother's intuition call it what you will but Solo was right on 4th January 2019 Kishi was out trying to find her cubs That day I saw Solo and she crossed the road and went to the left and all the way in the grassland i saw another tiger when he came close and we realized it's not mangu it's pamera junior another male who traverses solo territory but has not fathered the cubs and as pamera approached she started crouching down and started snarling like like that and suddenly they both got up on their hind legs and literally started fighting and then solo decided that if she does not stop him he's going to kill her cubs and it was a very heartbreaking moment to see this mother like that so she gets up pomera gets up as well and they start fighting again pomera takes his right paw and rips open solo's chest at that moment i was thought she was going to die but she comes back and and she fights pomera so he submits and starts walking away and solo like kicking screaming she drives this male away after the incident with bamera junior things started looking up for solo her cubs were big enough to venture out with her and she hadn't had any other encounters with rogue males life was good may 2019 i started filming her the first time i saw her was with a kill and suddenly out of nowhere it was kind of anticlimactic because we're waiting 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 and she comes and behind her three cubs and the fourth one pops out and it was amazing they came they crossed the road they ran towards the carcass and they completely demolished it they fought with each other so one of the cubs he he actually jumped onto the carcass and made sure that his sisters cannot eat uh all one the all all of the carcass to himself then next day in the morning we found them playing uh in the evening we found them climbing trees which is very rare tigers never climb trees but solo used to climb trees as a cub and her cubs climb trees as a cub as well and that's when you fall in love with those tigers solo was a happy queen in her thriving kingdom but in january 2020 there was news that one of the cubs went missing then solo went missing the forest department sent out search and rescue parties and keshri and his team joined in after about half an hour first cheetal call came that means a tiger you know when cheetal deer see tiger or langur see tiger they make alarm calls langur typically go like ah, 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 like that so we finally found solo where are the cubs waiting 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 no alarm calls suddenly something comes out from the left and i'm like tiger 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 and my nurses and the guide just wake up and they're like wow second comes second cub guide goes tiger 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 third tiger comes then the nurses goes tiger 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 and unbelievably we see the fourth one coming through from the outside everything was well but unknown to keshi and his team there was something dark conspiring in the shadows 
In March 2020, the novel coronavirus had spread across the world and India went into lockdown. The national park was closed to the public. On June 17th, I was there in Bandhakar. The next day I saw Solo. She looked a little frail and I observed some wounds on Solo's paw. And she was licking the wounds and constantly kept looking back, either for the cubs or either because she felt threatened. I was supposed to go late October, but news within the first week started coming through that Solo had moved from her territory into a territory near the buffer area. Solo did not want to go back into her territory because there were too many males in her territory. Another female is trying to encroach on her territory. There's no space left for her. Little did he know that June would be the last time he saw Solo ever again. The queen had fallen. On October 17th, uh, I got a very tragic news. Uh, the unfortunate incident happened. Um, Solo was found dead and her carcass was already decayed, which means she had been dead for quite some time. She was a fighter. She was an absolute fighter. What happened? Some people were saying that uh, another male killed her. Some people were saying she was poisoned. Some people were saying she died of natural causes. But the fact of the matter is she died. This is one tiger which is highly endangered. It's a breeding female in a national park and we'd lost her. Solo, along with one of her cubs, was found dead under the Dhamoka range in the buffer area of Bandhavgarh. While the forest department had yet to release the official report on her death, national media reported that it was likely a case of retribution killing by the villagers. The other three cubs, one male and two females, have been missing since. And there's no closure. What happened? Why did it happen? What was she doing there? Ten years down the line, we don't want to be in a situation where we're telling our kids that, listen, we knew how to protect tigers. We knew that we needed to connect different habitats. We knew we needed to relocate more villages. We knew we needed to educate more people and train more people. We knew how to save the tigers. We let them go.